Welcome to the fifth video in the video series How to Make Applications with Bitcoins. We are finally here. Today we are going to communicate with the Bitcoin QT server using Sysjob and .NET. I will make sure that even though you may be programming Java or Node.js or Ruby on Rails, it will still be useful because I will show you how to communicate with it and the overall concepts and not necessarily all the .NET objects you need to use. My name is Lars Holgaard and you can follow the tutorial here. You can also get the source code, get all the other information you you need. Before we start, it is important that you first of all know a bit about the basic concepts of bitcoins. So you know what a block is, what a blockchain is, what a transaction is and so forth. It is also important that you have set up your bitcoin server so it runs as a server and is synced with the network. So, if you have those preconditions met, it is time we look at some code. Right here, I have made the program myself. So, what you can see here is some basic code. I have taken the code from the Bitcoin Wiki and then I have made some changes to make it useful. Uh, what is interesting here is that we make a web request. And that is just as what you would do if you called a normal website and in this case we just call our local host where our Bitcoin server runs. So what we do is we make a web request to that, server, that uh, URL. We make sure that the username and password you have configured in the configuration file of your Bitcoin server is used here. And then our request should be application JSON and we should make a post. What we do is we also add some properties to this call. Uh, we can see that you have to have these JSON RPC, the version and ID and you need a method name. I, in this case I've created a method which takes the method name so I can use it more generic. Uh, you, here you can write uh, get balance, you can write uh, you know get info and all the other Bitcoin methods you can use for the API. On lastholgar.com, I will link to a list of all the different calls you can make to the Bitcoin QT server. I have also taken a list of parameters uh, as an argument to this method. I will add these to these, uh, this array. What this does is it it gives it makes it possible to send arguments to the Bitcoin server. So, for instance, if you want to get information about a transaction you would have a method here called get information about raw transaction and you would have the ID in your parameters uh, list here. So what we do is we then serialize the object and we, uh, we make the call. We simply post uh, all this information to the, uh, to the URL. I'm pretty sure that if you used Python this could be done in very few lines. Now this is .NET so it takes uh, quite a lot of lines to make it done. And then we uh, we get the response from the request. And what we do here is we convert the response value to a JSON object. I have used JSON.NET. If you're the .NET developer and you want to use JSON.NET, you should go into your tools, library package manager, manage NuGet packages for solution, and then you should search for JSON.NET. And you can see I have installed it. You should install it too, or use some other. Uh, framework for working with JSON. What we get back here is a JSON object and that's what we re return. We can see the function returns a string so what we basically do is we have the JSON object and return it as a string because we have a true string here. So the all concept is simply make a request, give it some par properties and some uh, you know array, you know, some, some parameter information and then make the post. It's pretty straightforward. So if we run this, we can uh, see what happens. If we decide then to run this uh, program, we will see that we get a response with is a JSON string where we can see that currently there is uh, 243,000 blocks in the blockchain. So that's actually how we run methods against uh, the Bitcoin QT server. It's really simple. Of course, if we need parameters, what you would do is simply to uh, add them to this array when you post it. And in csharp.net, what you would do is add some kind of string here. We could just pause the program, and then we could say, 
value and then I would have it in this list here and when I iterate the list down here we would add it to the J array which is then added to our JSON object which is then serialized and posted to the server so that should be pretty simple communicating with the Bitcoin Q2 server is pretty simple of course what you would really do in the real world is to use a wrapper in the long run or make your own kind of wrapper for it so in this video we have just shown on a very high level how you, you would communicate with the server in the next video I will show you how I have made a wrapper for the Bitcoin QT server so instead of uh, handling all these things yourself you can just call C sharp methods and then get information back that you can use very easily see you in the next video if you are a .NET developer otherwise I will say thank you for listening I hope that you have enjoyed this video series have learned some and now has a basic understanding of how you would go around and use the Bitcoin QT server to make applications and by doing that make better applications for Bitcoin and make some very interesting projects and companies so we can get Bitcoin out to the people and make it easier to use and change the world by changing the banking system. I really hope that you'll participate in this network of awesome people who create stuff and I wish you all the best.